look on the water. Fire in the sky. Isn't it Riders in the Sky? <laughs> Is it? I thought it was Fire in the Sky. Yeah. I'm thinking of the movie Fire in the Sky. What's up, everybody? It's the Hardy Construction. That that was a movie about. The four guys hiding that they had a huge gay orgy. That anyway, one is a good movie to review. <laughs> it's the Hardy Construction. You can find us at hardyconstruction.tumblr.com. YouTube.com slash hardyconstruction as well as Facebook.com slash the Hardy Construction. As well as you can check out uh, horrorharbor.tumblr.com. Uh, with your host, Alex. Sydney Crawford. And. Thea. The today's film is VHS2. Sorry. Go ahead say it, Danny. Uh, I'm supposed to say, Go ahead, it. say it. I didn't know if you forgot or not. Go ahead. VHS We're breaking two. rules. VHS two. It's too late. <laughs> it's too late. Save yourself. VHS. Does anybody have the IMDb page on? Because I'm fucked up. Or S dash VHS. VHS two is an anthology film. Because I'm picking it up as I go. Uh, uh, Google, help me, please. I got ya, I got ya. It features a series of found footage shorts. It is the sequel to the film VHS. The film was rushed into production in late... I'm not what gonna read all that. What the fuck you read? Okay, here we go. Searching for a missing student, two private investigators break into a house and find a collection of VHS tapes. Viewing the horrific contents of each cassette, they realize there may be dark motives behind the students. Uh, bullshit! Who wrote this <laughs> shit? Get the fuck out of here. Anyway, it's an anthology it's so film, full of crap. and the frame narrative is very loose. It's directed. You know what I like? I like that there's Cut. not fucking 400 bros having a sausage party throughout the whole movie. It's there's directed. No bros. There's no uh, bros in this movie. Already, no already, it's um a step up from the original bros running around, uh, creating chaos, which yeah. was a wraparound film on the first film. Anyway, so it's it has five directors, right? Or sit, maybe uh, it was seven directors. I think it's seven uh, directors actually, well, because some yeah, of the technically some of the, there's like a couple of teens, right? Yeah, a couple of teens. Oh boy! So uh, let's talk about the segment tape forty nine, which is the wraparound film of VHS two. Originally, the VHS two was supposed to be called S. VHS, but I guess maybe they thought they couldn't <laughs> I market it. I already said that, Alex. Did, you no, you didn't. You serious? <laughs> I'm glad I when I don't listen to you. That. Okay, wow. so let's talk about tape 49. Can you guys set it up for me? Who wants to set it up? Yeah. Danny? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Fuck it. Sydney Danny. Crawford? Or... So, sorry, go ahead, Sydney. Oh, thank you. Um, How do you well, do this, Thea? You know what he's going to do. Go ahead, Danny. There's yeah, well. a guy that looks like the guy from <laughs> Dexter who gets killed. Oh, yeah, on you're the right. Is it him? Let me check. Tape 49. It doesn't matter. Keep I'll keep talking. You check. He yeah. looks like the guy from Dexter. He's like a dork, and he's a, some kind of cop or journalist or something. No, I, I think he was a PI. I think he was a PI. Oh, okay. And he's with... Oh, yeah, I could read this thing. Well, whatever. I'll try he's to do it. He's with some little cutie patootie. So he's with this girl, and she's kind of cute. She's pretty That's cute. one of those girls... Huh? She's kind of cute. She reminded me of, like, uh, one of those, like, redhead journalists. There's a thing with journalists <laughs> being redheads oh. in the mask movie... <laughs> In Battle Start, no. The mask. No, not, you mean the one with Cher, with the guy has the face? No. What am I oh. thinking of? Oh, with Hannibal, <laughs> the redhead. About? In Harry Potter, Rita Skeeter, isn't she a redhead? Am I wrong about that? Oh, oh Hannibal, the TV she's show. Blonde. Right. Well, I think she's she... blonde in the movies. You know what? I'm furious. Who are you talking about? about? That. Who's blonde in the movies? We don't Rita care. Skeeter you don't and care Harry about Potter. Harry don't worry about it. <laughs> Rita Skeeter. She skeet skeet skeet. Yeah, you know skeeting. But it's Miranda Richardson. Skeeting means jizzing. Okay, go ahead, guys. Girl from the mask is uh, used to be John Ritter's wife and was yeah, his she's wife. Hot. And okay, stuff. did you do a, like a synopsis of the frame narrative? Go ahead, Danny. Oh, I don't what's this about? <laughs> Thea is whatever they go in this house. Now we know what kind of drunk Thea is. They're gonna oh, look bully. at some videos, and I don't really get what their purpose. They're looking is. for this um, missing kid. They're, they're looking up. They're checking up on this kid, this university student that has escaped the rap, the grasp of his parents the because rap. they want him to be checked up on. And he's in this random house. It starts out with this guy who has about 50 cameras on him. He's, uh, he's very... <laughs> he's How did you get that, Thea? Did it actually say it? What? That what you just explained? I think she's... Or did you read it? She's smart, remember? So remember... That is true. I'm making she's... it up. It starts out with this camera POV of this guy, uh, following <laughs> this man and his... Uh, a married man having sex with this woman who has horrifically plastic breasts. <laughs> and, uh, they have sex out in the open and then you can see him doing stuff. And then the guy, uh, he gets found out, he sees Wiener, 
so I guess fun, fun for people to watch. <laughs> and the guy gets to his car, he gets his car damaged, and he's basically blackmailing the guy to that. That's not that's sort of no consequence to the story. But anyway, he brings his cutie, his cutie pie uh, friend. Is it his girlfriend? It's right? his, I think it's his girlfriend. He brings I his thought cutie. she was his partner. I think he's well. He says like baby later on. So yeah. I assume. Right. What a fucking idiot that character is. So he brings the, he brings the girl uh, with him uh, on this case where they're looking for this boy who obviously who ran away from home. I assume and the mother was trying to. I don't know. The fucking guy looks about thirty five, and mm. uh, he's running. Home, he runs out. And I guess they figured out he was in this abandoned house, mm-hmm. and they go in there and they find a couple of TV sets that have. It's basically a setup of the first one. And you just everybody goes into a room and you just play tapes. Honestly, is, it the, is it the same house? I, they only play no, all the episodes so. of Looney Tunes. Very good. So I, I, I don't think it's the setup of the same house. So the same house had like a had a whole basement and everything else. This was just kind of ru- you only saw like about three rooms in this house. Yeah. And uh, they, but I, I gotta say it's handled a lot better. Although there was probably yes. more, it was more chances of scares in the well, first one. Well, because it's not like five obnoxious bros. Yeah, the bros. They got mm-hmm. rid of the bros, so thankfully. They got rid of those fucking idiots. I, said, I bet that was their number one complaint. It's like, what would you like to see change in the sequel of VHS? And everybody's Get like, the no fucking bros, bros out of here! <laughs> but yeah, this one, they, they kind of just went straight to the point. They didn't spend an hour bullshitting around, breaking windows, and, and sharking girls by lifting up their shirts. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> oh yeah, it was like within five minutes. Not even well, they did show some boobies in the beginning, so I guess they got their <laughs> they got their uh, a mountain of boobies. And uh, so the for, in the sky. while this guy boobies in the sky, while this guy is uh, checking around in the in the house, the girl sits down and starts putting in VHS tapes, and which leads us to our first film, which was called Phase, Phase One, One Clinical Trials. What was that about? I, I saw the movie today and I already forgot what the fuck it was about. It was the eye one. The oh, one. yes. The eye. Ah, so Direct, this guy... Directed by Adam Wingard and starring Adam Wingard. That was oh, Adam Wingard. Wingard. Oh, the guy? Adam yeah. Wingard. Were those the guys... One of the guys from... Um, uh, oh, God. ABCs of Death? I'm going to give yeah. you a... Is that so the one where... He's the, a, a director. Is that know, the one where they know killed... What he did? Yeah. yeah. Adam Winger did Tape 56, which was the wraparound of the first VHS. Ugh. Yeah. And he also did Q is for Quack. That's ABC. why. That's where I yeah. murdered him. Which is oh, one okay. he was also starring in. That was the so meta one, right? he's an obnoxious hipster asshole with no talent. He's basically... And, and he's also the director of Your Next. Mm, so, Your Next mm-hmm. I hear is good, so... Uh, so, so it might we'll be the see. first good Being thing Quack I've seen was from a him. Little Cute. Maybe he might be. Good. He's probably. I think you see him in the trailer too. I think he gets hit with an with an arrow in the trailer oh, and dies. Got but it, uh, I think he's basically doing real work for him. R e e l, like so he can be an actor and stuff. So he doesn't have to he's direct. A pretty anymore. bad actor in some parts. It's pretty bad. I do show. like his. I, they, so anyway, he's this guy who got into. A, he's but a, you don't have to pay somebody, right? <laughs> he's this guy yeah. who gets into a car accident. They don't. They don't. That gets revealed later, and he gets a like a, some sort of test eye put in. Mm-hmm. To fix his eye, I guess. Why? Why they wouldn't do it to people that are blind? Uh, who knows? Know. So he, it's a pretty cool effect. He looks like a superhero. He has like this one digital eye. It's all like color cool. different. That's pretty neat. Yeah. And uh, while they're telling him, "Oh, we're recording everything you're doing," he goes, "Can I get private time? I guess to jack off or take a shit." And they're like, "No, we're recording everything." So as he's leaving, I, I swear to God, when I first saw this girl that comes in. I was like, holy fuck, I'm in love with whoever that girl is. I literally was like, I want to hit the rewind button just so I can see her face. She was so It's all right, fucked. you don't have to. You get to see a lot more in her face. Shh. Yeah, that's, that's true. She had those nice, uh, like I like to say, she had those nice indie titties. I wasn't sure what you were going to say with that. Just indie what titties. You, she had those you nice... Uh... You, know those, you know the indie titties? Indie titties yeah. when they're not too big, not too small, they're nice. Mm-hmm. And you can be what like, what is ma- the word? Indie. indie, like indie movie, I N D I E, like indie titties. And you, you just call can, them indie titties. Yeah, you can just titties. no, like indie I film. I think you just came up with a new like. Good. Catchphrase. And you can like sit. Indie titties. You can sit with her and hold her like next to candles or listen to Tegan and Sarah. It would be so fun. Uh, oh what's that God. girl's name? She's oh so God. cute, Samantha Gracie. It's her first film, and we know why. Ufa, is she a bad actor? But she is so fucking adorable that I didn't She's give a not fuck. Not that bad. He's really bad, bad in points. No, they're, not so they're bad in other bad. points. Uh, they're pretty bad. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, she sees him and she gives him this look, like you know, fleeting look. And he walks away and I was like, please God, please God, put her in the film for the rest of the movie. <laughs> I was that smitten. You know, like the girl in the first film with the aliens putting shit yeah. in her spine or whatever the fuck that was? Yeah. 
this this is her for me. I was like, holy fuck, she's so cute. Yes, I'm a loser. So anyway, he leaves, he goes home, and he gets haunted. Uh, he's in his house. Well, you guys want to set up how that works out? Cause, uh... Spooky things under his oh. bed. Shapes and such. <laughs> Oh it was really typical ghost appearances. Shitty ghosts, house. right? These are some. They're like zombie like ghosts. Cue bloody dude and creepy, ki- creepy kid. Oh, sh- did you <laughs> hear that, like Danny? She, she almost said a racist word about Jewish people. Yeah, yeah it was oh pretty. Oh my god! Uh, did you hear that? Like, it was very stereotypical. <laughs> it was, but I mean, the ghosts weren't scary at all. They were kind of no. shitty looking. The part that I actually, I think, I jumped was when he looked in the mirror really quick. I was like, oh, and then I was like, oh yeah, wait a minute. I actually think oh, it, starts to, it starts to get cooler towards the end, but yeah. like at first was it's the end like, after the credits or like oh here's Mr. Wilson dressed as a zombie. Here's <laughs> There's this. a bell in the air, <laughs> so uh, he gets haunted and he sleeps in his bathtub. I'd figure if I saw fucking ghosts of, of a child and a man, I'd, I'd run out the building first off. I'd probably leave my house. Yeah, yeah you know I, I mean? never get it in these movies. And there and there are people <laughs> that are... Mo- I would move to a different state. <laughs> There's people monitoring this, so won't they be like, what the fuck did we just see? Well, and but this is what it is. They're not monitoring it live. Are right? they not? This oh. is my theory. This is my theory. It reminds me of Firestarter. Have you guys ever seen that? Yeah. Yeah, like, it's like an experiment. They probably are, like, some kind of paranormal experiment thing that, like, purposefully are using guinea pigs for this without telling them. Mm, that would be interesting. Well, we I know like what that. already happens, because the girl went there for the whatever. Yeah, so the girl returns. Uh, what was her name in the movie? Shouldn't... I've never heard of her. Why you can't her. trust technology? She comes, to, that's true. She comes to the apartment, and her name, uh, her name, she has a, a cochlear, she's she say cochlear, a cochlear implant, which uh, is co- the ear. I don't know how to say it, cochlear implant? Uh, yeah, I think it's cochlear, but she said cochlear, yeah. so she had a... Yeah. Um, <laughs> she like leered no, at Coke. nobody wanted to correct her so they just yeah i wouldn't i'd be like yeah whatever you say honey <laughs> so she comes over to the house and she's telling him how i guess she started having funny things going on where she could hear people talk like ghosts mm-hmm. and then she starts you know telling him in really bad acting about what's going on it was really bad they should have combined their powers. i felt so bad I was so ca- I was so just like okay whatever you say is fine that I just didn't even notice the bad acting. Like he would plug his ears and she would open her eyes, <laughs> or she would open his eyes and that's it. They would just hand hold each other's hands. It's like Patrick <laughs> Swayze is the one that makes these products yeah. <laughs> from beyond and <laughs> from, yes. from, from, from beyond the grave. So she's over there and she's telling him all this bullshit. Nobody's listening. You just want to get to the ghost part, but she's so adorable. <laughs> she's so cutie. And yeah, then uh, yeah, these nice indie titties. And then this big fat yeah, indie titties. Yummy, <laughs> yum, yum. You, could, you know what I mean? You could go get some artichoke pizza from Manhattan and sit and watch. That's my new favorite. Donnie thing. Darko. And artichoke. then indie titties are my new favorite thing. Indie oh, titties. okay. And I she thought artichoke pizza. Man. <laughs> so she's over there, and then the the guy sees a ghost of this big fat guy in his underwear, like out the door, and she says that was her uncle, and I guess they lead to like molestation references or. And uh, can you imagine that? That guy was so obsessed with it. <laughs> Never mind. So she decides to to spook the ghost off. She'll take her shirt off and show her indie titties and have sex with them. And, and that fuck. wards off the ghosts. <laughs> but this is the thing. So she can't see them. She could only hear them. He could both see and hear them. Yeah, you're right. Yep. Glitch. Hey, they fucked up. Nice job, Adam <laughs> Winger. And also... There is a Are You Afraid of the Dark episode with magical glasses that make people see just this. Did a girl fuck the guy in the episode? I think it was pretty racist. Oh, yeah, for a teenage yeah, yeah. series. <laughs> and then, uh, bo- uh, Take your pants off! Uh, Dan. What's the guy from, uh, that, that slime show? Dan, uh, and what would you <laughs> Bukaki do? Bukaki Central. What? Dan, uh. <laughs> Zap, no, not Dan. Gak or something? What the fuck? No, he's talking? the host of that What Would You Do show. And, no, like, Double the, Dare? Yeah, Double Dare, yeah. Oh, Mark uh, something. You know he had OCD, right? Yeah, he, was he hated it when people That guy comes him. on and starts, like... <laughs> Mark know, Summers? Taking her from the rear. <laughs> and then he he used to be Ronald... He used to be Ronald, he used to be Ronald McDonald. Time, and all these little kids run and get splashed by it. He has absolutely no idea what the fuck we're talking about. But anyway, so, so yeah, they have sex, yeah. and then... It all leads... It, 
it leads to her getting drowned. It's so funny because he's trying to save her and she gets sucked into the pool by these ghosts. He's terrible at saving her. He's just a terrible person in general. And then he tries he to lied. save her. And then he just leaves the pool. She's there at the bottom of the pool. <laughs> he didn't even try to fucking take her out and give her CPR or nothing. The bitch's yeah. eyes are open in the pool and he just leaves the pool. Like, oh man, yeah, I'm this is sorry, awful. But if there were fucking monsters all around me and I saw a girl get dragged by nothing. I would probably just let her die and run too if, if she seemed dead really already. Really I'm not gonna sit there and do CPR for ten minutes as ghosts are trying to kill me. She's pretty hot. You wouldn't do it. But she did bone him. No questions asked. Oh, but it would be fun to pump her chest. <laughs> what? You know, like for the CPR. <laughs> so he didn't pull her out of the pool. She's there in the bottom of the pool. She's dead. And then he uh, runs back into the bathroom instead of running out of the fucking apartment or uh, over the house. <laughs> He goes into the house because he has to look in the mirror. Oh yes, why? Because he wants to. Because it's a movie. Nobody makes smart. <laughs> Wouldn't he look in, in a movies. car window as he's like <laughs> running or something? Jesus. That would have to. That would have to be a smart thing. To now, do you think the ghosts were in that house or they followed him? No, because, they follow him. He's because obviously. Anything. Yeah, so what, what, what the fuck do you think he did to get those ghosts there? She did ask him, "Did you ever do anything bad?" Right? Says, that's no. what I want to that's, know. So there's some, maybe there's something there because yeah, her he uncle... Oh, yeah, a, little, a little like a body <laughs> that keeps appearing in his bed and a little girl and an old yeah. ma- like an older dude. He was into that fucking... Anyway, so her <laughs> uncle followed her and he's followed by this by this old man and the little girl. So who knows? Maybe he hit him with a car. Who knows? But uh, Who he, was in his bed? I don't know. Apparently, it was a shape uh, of a woman, right? Maybe you like killed somebody in his bed. I don't think so. He seems like too much of the wussy type to kill him. Yeah, probably. I think it was just shitty. That's all. That's how it ends, pretty much. I wasn't really. can't blame Adam Wingard for everything because it actually the director writer of the frame narrative, Simon Barrett, is the one who wrote this. Simon Barrett. Simon Barrett. What's the rate? Does that mean you share the blame, sir? As much as you. What would you rate this one, guys? Mm -hmm. Quick rating, one through ten. I'd give it a four out of ten. Oh, that's hard. I'll give, it a, I'll give it a six. Yeah, All right, I'll give it a, I'll, I'll give watchable. it a six. I, I, I'll give it a five out of six for them. That girl, she's so fucking cute and adorable. <laughs> five out of six. I sound really pathetic, but this is how I am. Five when I'm out drunk. Six is pretty good. Did I say five out of six? I'm a five yeah. out of ten. Sorry, guys. I was just entranced by an, <laughs> by the idea of dating a, a hipster girl with half a shaved head, and then we can Red walk hair. the moonlight and then take the New York City rental Red bikes. Hair, man. Yeah. All right, what about you, Thea? Oh, you said it. Everybody th- said that? You said six. Six, said six, six, and five out of six. Good job, guys. So then uh, we go back. Do we already uh, cover what happens? Nothing really important happens yeah, with a wraparound yeah. at that point. Uh, so then we're led to the other film, which I completely forgot as well. What was the next one? A Ride in the Park. That was, was awesome. good. It was good. I enjoyed it. That was directed by the guys. Oh, well, I think one of the guys did uh, the original Blair Witch Project. So. Yes. Those motherfuckers vanished off the uh, face of the earth. I, I, I work. Well, they've with... done the odd thing that I have never seen. So. <laughs> you never seen Blair Witch? I think Blair no, Witch. No, I've seen Blair Witch, but I haven't seen any of the other things they've done. Have so. they done a couple of films? I, I wasn't really. They've done a few other things. I remember they tried to do a movie about a guru or something. It is it is it the two guys from Blair Witch or is it only one of them? Eduardo the, Sanchez. One of them oh, is the, love, the love guru. <laughs> no, uh, Eduardo Sanchez. Did Blair Witch. The moon. Yeah, Eduardo Sanchez for sure worked on uh, Blair Witch, which I. And they did. They, he actually did Lovely Molly and Altered. He had something to do with, and I've heard of both of those movies. But yeah. not seeing them. But uh, those, I remember speaking to this <laughs> this director that I know. He said that personally, those guys were just like throwing their money away. So that's probably why they haven't really had a hit, or they were making bad investments. Mm-hmm. But whatever. This one is pretty good. Yeah, I, I think liked it's. It. I, I liked it a lot. I like the premise. I didn't think I was going to at first. I mean, it, it takes a zombie premise. What we start out was with this guy who definitely uh, he's kind of got the chubby face. So I do not believe that he's a, a extreme biker in any what sense. What was the point of the camera on his head? GoPro. A lot of people do that. They, GoPro, yeah. I, I sit on yeah. YouTube when I have nothing to do, which is like a lot, and I'll watch people <laughs> walk through a Japanese fucking a hundred, like a dollar store, and uh-huh. it's fucking it's entrancing because you're living. It's basically I'm gonna sound like such a fucking nerd, but you're just <laughs> watching footage of no. somewhere else in the world. I mean, does any do I sound that you weird? Just like watch GoPro footage just for fun. No, not that. No, I, no, I'm not doing that. But you know, there's there's footage of people that. Are in Tokyo or something, or, or in uh, Brazil, and they're just looking at the scenery because I'm not there right now. I can't go there, 
but right. I want to, and you you're just like uh, you you're living through somebody else. You took a memory lane. Wait, no, that's not but right. But somebody yeah, else's yeah, memory. completely wrong. Someone else's memory. But line. yeah, so a lot of people go pro, and there's a lot of extreme sports writers that go pro writing. Th- I, I don't watch that kind of go pro stuff. But uh, it's basically, remember, what was the shitty, the second shitty, well, to me the second shittiest one in the ABCs of death was the guy surfing, and he drowns. That was awful. That was like GoProing on uh, a surfboard. I didn't remember that one. I thought you were talking about the <laughs> miscarriage. So, I remember it because it was so awful. Miscarriage was the worst. The surfing was the second worst. To me. You know least. what it was? G for gravity. I will there remember you go. You forever. Remember. Huh. So anyway, yeah, so this guy is basically GoProing. He has a camera mm-hmm. on his bicycle, uh, on the handlebars, facing at him, and then a, a, a camera facing outward. And I gotta say, he gets a call from his girlfriend. I forget her name was Andy or some shit like that. Yeah. And uh, Andy, I gotta say, I got a little twinge of uh, sadness in this one. It, was, it made me a little sad. At the very end, sad. yeah. It made me a little sad. A little sad. <laughs> and he's riding his bicycle. He runs to this woman who uh, got attacked in the woods. And what happens, guys? He, oh, there's a zombie. There's a girl, and she's consigned. Her boyfriend. Someone's after her, maybe. And the guy <laughs> says... Okay. She wanted Did a little nosh. Is that a thing? <laughs> that just happened. Oh no. She wasn't very good. She wasn't one of the chosen people. She was know? having some sort of issue, and he says, "Hey, I help you." She started <laughs> kvetching. She wanted a little I nosh be used off of him. By now, I was just in Long Island, but I'm still. Yeah, what a I, racist I didn't term. See you. That's kind yep, of. Yep, I knew it. She, you know, she told me ahead of time. She's like, "Please don't tell Danny I'm here." I was like, "Fuck, yo, that's fucked <laughs> up, bro." Anyway. So go ahead. They, she starts vomiting black, I guess, bile out of her body, and and then, and then she becomes a zombie. No, asshole. He sees other people Thanks. coming towards him. Oh right, 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 right. All right, guys, fabulous. <laughs> so he turns into a zombie. They have that whole uh, thing. I think they kept it a smidge too long with him dying, because it's yeah. all POV. But whatever, it works. Just zombie POV like straight away. Pretty I much. like those vomit noises. It remind me of Twenty Days Later. Yeah, yeah, it was very, very much so. They were taken from that, and so he turns to a zombie, and he gets followed by a, a couple finds him, and the girl actually calls the cops. You know, so that's yeah, good. he bites the shit out of him. Bites out. Of, I didn't see him bite the girl, so it was funny to see her come back. I don't think he bit her. I think she got uh, bitten by the, the other guys, right? Boyfriend bites. It her. was an instant zombie oh, okay. conversion, though. So it's she cool. she comes back and then he he starts eating the guts of the boyfriend and then she has the most adorable. It's a zombie, but it's so adorable the way her <laughs> bike her bike helmet slides down her head. So she kind of like, <laughs> like a sailor. She's so cute. And they all turn into zombies and they start hearing this uh, these people like having a good time. So they run. They wa- They stumble upon zombies. A, don't like fun time. A child's <laughs> birthday time. Yeah. You know they're the party crashers. They're trying to have Rule their own fun. One. They just have like a different style of fun. You know, you just fuck up somebody right. else's day. Uh, anyway, so they they stumble upon this birthday party. And they, I thought it would be a lot of massacres, but they, it happens a second after. But they, I guess they didn't <laughs> want to style of fun. They didn't really want to show kids dying in this version, so which wasn't really ballsy, I guess. And um, people start freaking out. Surprising, considering who did. Yeah, this. what this film is. Well, uh, maybe he just didn't want to do it to the director himself. I'm sure everybody else was fine with it because kids died in the other ones. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And uh, it, it leads to the zombie himself, you know, getting attacked, getting shot. It's pretty cool. It's, you know what it reminded me of, which was always superior, was Ben Wheatley's You is for Undead from ABCs of Death. Oh, yeah, was, yeah, exactly. Which, yeah. It's the POV of the vampire creature getting that attacked, part. which is fucking amazing. They did in that, two minutes, like they did in three people. minutes what this film took about like 15 minutes or so to do. Although yeah. I still like this one as well. But I think I like he's pretty good effects. It- it was kind of like cute and funny. Yeah, it was funny in a way. It was gory because and it was good. You and... is for undead was more serious and sort of like really intense. You thought it was? Yeah, I thought I thought it was. Uh, you is for undead was very campy and very much like uh, hammer horror kind of. It was fun over the but top. It was like, yeah, it was more. Yeah, intense. but it was very much more serious than I this. Never right. heard that term. This one was more kind of like silly and having fun. With hammer it. Hammer uh, films are these British kind of films, that, uh, British horror films. Like they did a lot of the Frankenstein. They did, cool. it, they did it with Christopher Lee oh, and stuff. Okay. I I never actually never saw those films. The only Hammer film I saw was the remake of um, Let Me In. That one that oh, was a okay. Hammer remake. But it was way oh, more really? modern. Yeah, that was, that was a fucking great movie. That's underrated, I think. Let Me In was underrated. I saw it a lot. I couldn't believe I'd never seen it. It was good. So, he, he there's it's basically a whole zombie melee attack, and he gets shot and gets stabbed in the eye with a, with a fork. What was it, like a burger fork kind of thing? Or yeah. For the grill, a grill fork. And <laughs> then at the end, he gets a call back from his girlfriend, and then he kind of, his humanity seeps in a little bit. 
He grabs a teddy bear. Yeah, and then he gets hit by a car yeah. for it and gets run over. And he gets a call from destroyed. his girlfriend. Yeah, so he gets... <laughs> I think Theo wasn't Maybe listening. Maybe he got a craving for bear. <laughs> it was cute. Flesh. I just said it three seconds ago. <laughs> so he... <laughs> Theo was like, man... Alex is such a cares about what you say. Exactly. You. So um, yeah, Alex, he gets the call back, and then he realizes he gets a shot. To. He gets a shotgun that was uh, one guy who gets killed, and uh, he blows his brains out. Because it's very sad. I felt very sad at the end. I mean, for you know, yeah, couldn't get attached to the guy, but still, I was like, oh, you know, you know kind of sucks. I've seen a lot of zombie stuff. And unless it's done very well, I tend to get bored. And I was a little bored by this, I have mm, to say. Okay. Really? Yeah, a little bit. It was I good. It. it was good. I like the effects and stuff, but I don't know. It's hard to do new stuff with zombies. It's hard. Yeah, I think that's like, what it is. I think that's why I liked it, that it went different. There was a video game that came out for, I think, the PS3, where you play the zombie, and all you do is walk around eating people. And it looked fun. cool. <laughs> And, you and get they're shooting to, at you, and you feel like dodges, right? Like, and you and it's like it takes place in the fifties, so it's not like crazy with people with giant guns going after you. So it's more, it's more uh, believable that you can attack these people and get away with it. And then you get to control the zombies and hordes, and it's like GTA oh, with that's a zombie. That's like Pikmin with zombies. It's something the zombie. It's it's a guy's name, but uh, yeah, I, I like that aspect of it. But uh, great, but yeah. you thought it was a little, it was still a little bit redundant on the genre, huh? Uh, for me, it's just I don't know. I'm just. How many times have I seen zombies? You know, it's yeah. like it's yeah, no, fair enough. I liked it because it was zombie POV. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, I've never cool. seen much of that. I've never seen that before. I mean, yeah, the only like, the only I other the only monster POV besides you for the undead is when you watch a slasher film and the camera splits for like three seconds yeah, doing like the POV of the killer. Or, or, or Black Christmas, which was an, a fucking oh, amazing. That's an underrated horror film right there. Black Christmas, the original one. <laughs> Would you say Black Maniac? That's racism. So, what what is your rating on this one, guys? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna give this one a seven. I I will as well give it a seven out of ten. And you, Danny? Uh, I'm sorry. That's fine. I am a famous <laughs> supermodel. What? I am a Wait, famous what? supermodel. Okay. My name. S What's S your supermodel name? Sydney Crawford. Sydney Crawford. Sure, oh, thank you. God, did uh, I have a crush I'm on Sydney give Crawford? This a oh, again so a six. Out That's of not so bad. No, it's not bad. No, oh, I know. He's gonna I give it a worse rating. I didn't say it was terrible. Oh, okay. I said it was <laughs> six out of ten. Okay. Excellent. Goes back to I never the. Never said it was like the worst thing I've ever seen. Like, yeah. You said you, yeah. you were apologizing before <laughs> you even gave well, your opinion. You guys, were, guys, you're like guys. You guys I'm sorry. What I'm about to do? It's one you point guys less. Are so into it, I feel guilty that oh, I'm please. not. Okay. Uh, so anyway, the neg it goes back to the tape 49, and then we're seeing the, uh, whatever, the guy's ghost running around behind them, or it's not a ghost, it's a guy. Who gives you a flying fuck? And mm -hmm. anyway, next film, to me, which is the shining, crowning achievement of this film. <laughs> Who gives this flying fuck? <laughs> huh? Yeah, fucking Safe Haven, this was the best. Thea, yes. what's the name of this one? And directed Safe by? Ha Safe Haven. Safe Haven. And it's uh, directed by the guy that in ABCs of Death made the libido. Oh, he did that one. Yeah, yeah. Gar it was Gareth Evans. Gareth and Evans. Know, yeah, Gareth. Didn't you Fiance. notice the? Didn't you notice that the cult leader is the weird creepy oh, yeah. guy that's masturbating? It is. It is. Gareth Evans is a white guy that lives in Indonesia. I guess he does. Gareth Evans did like the raid, which yes. I heard of. Yes, I saw I the raid. Seen. I actually, I, I, I visited. Him. <laughs> I went to go see it with my dad recently, and we were watching it, and it was fucking awesome. That movie's is really good? good. It's really I've fun. I've heard it was good. It's fun with just action. I mean, and, and but it's not an action where it's like... But it's not Gareth Evans that did the ABCs. It's Timo... Oh. Uh, no, Johnson. they both did. They both did. Oh, really? Yeah. But oh, the, okay. The Together, Raid... Like, they both made... Yeah, look yeah it was like a team. It was weird oh, because... Oh, okay. They're a great team. Jesus. Yeah. The Raid Redemption came out a while back, and it... Uh, there was a film that came out that was kind of similar with this idea of a person going up this level of, of a building and getting attacked at all fronts. And it was it's kind of like Game of Death, which is a Bruce Lee film. And anyway, so he uh, there was another film that came out, Dread, starring Carl Urban, who played Dr. McCoy from it's the about Star Trek. Dreadlocks. <laughs> yes, it's Dreadlocks. He was like, Pon the river, upon the rocks. Yeah. And that was a fucking awesome movie. And they compared it to a lot, but neither movies really made that much money. But... Dread is not getting a sequel, which I fucking like that movie a lot. If you like John Carpenter kind of films, Dread was really good, the remake. Uh oh, I'll the check reboot. it out. And, yeah, um, and so I saw The Raid Redemption, which kind of had a similar kind of storyline, but they were actually made about similar times. 
so they really ripped off each other. And the Raid Redemption was fucking good because it's like brutal action. Like there's a there's, it's not just like karate like where people just two. Well, no, uh, we should see demons <laughs> too. But anyway, it's about these cops that are doing a raid at this drug lord's complex. And there's just one scene where it's just so brutal that this one guy is a bad guy is reaching out from a hole in the ceiling, and the hero kind of just puts him in a bear hug and runs forward and throws him out the window so he has no point to ever touch the floor. It's like that kind of brutality. People get stabbed left and right, but it's a fucking amazing action film. He also directed this movie. Uh, Gareth Evans did this movie called Merintau, which is all Indonesian films. So it's so weird to see this white guy directing Indonesian films, but then you realize, oh, there's all these, you know, the world, there's, there's people living in different countries. And yeah. his eye for the action and storytelling, as well as his uh, co-director on this, really seeps through. So you want to set up the story for you? Yeah, sure. Um, Safe Haven is basically about a group of investigators that go into a compound that promises, like, life beyond and beyond the present existence. It's and very, a, like a paradise. It's very much an Indonesian take on... Uh, who's the guy the, the cult who drank all the Kool-Aid? It, on uh, Jonestown. Jonestown, it's right. Jonestown's, Jonestown's massacre. Town. So, but it's Jonestown, but like demonic cult almost. But you don't know that till later. Yeah. So uh, th this uh, cool. interview crew is this uh, director, his sound guy, his slutty girl. I mean, his girlfriend and his <laughs> best friend, who's I guess a producer there. They go and they. Is there visit only four of them? Yes. Okay. And <laughs> the four of them are visiting this this cult leader. He's not a cult leader, but you know, they're not saying it's cult leader, but obviously it's cult leader. They're telling. They're trying to convince this guy. They're trying to convince this guy that they're going to do an... He is a religious leader, guys. Have some respect right, for sorry different about that. cultures. Respect. They're, they're trying to do a, an unbiased, and I'm doing the finger quotes, uh, account, a documentary on his on his group. So they, they get the okay. Uh, the, the guy wasn't going to give them the okay, the religious leader, until he saw her hand touch his, the director's hand, and obviously he saw there was something going on there he for some like, reason. He was like, oh, yeah. He was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Bitches get away. Oh. Okay, okay, you can interview me. If you're doing I've, it, that's all right. I thought you guys were going to do a horrible Asian accent, and you did an accent, I don't even know what the fuck you did. So they go and they go to the house, and already it's creepy. There, There's women that greet them. One is like a 12-year-old girl, and the you woman... You the midget that goes, the plane, boss. <laughs> the plane, the plane. He shot himself. Can you imagine how big that gun must have been to him? <laughs> so they go to this place, and there's already a hint of this... This religious leader is having sleeping with these young girls because he's saying, you know, she's like, I was, you know, I was whatever, like, but then he helped, me, oh and they God. cut him off, yeah. So, yeah. so they go in and it's all creepy. They give her, they give the uh, girlfriend, the fiance of the director, a straw, a little straw man around her neck, and then she's like, fuck this. She throws I it just out. thought of the backstory. That's what happens. That guy wins that masturbation thing in libido, <laughs> and his prize is he gets his own cult. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And he goes on and he does the greatest work ever. <laughs> So mm -hmm. they um, they're starting. They're, they're going around this little labyrinth of. It's a very big complex, and already it's very seedy and creepy. It's it has that feeling of, to me, how Hostel was. You know how like, you're. But that's us watching it. I'm sure in Indonesia, like that same place as my house. You know, they're like that. <laughs> that was a German accent, and you know that, was beautiful. that kind of xenophobic air where you're. Just, these people all came uh, are from Indonesia. I assume when the white, even the white guy, uh, yeah. and they're 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 visiting and there there's like kids getting taught lessons there's somebody with a, like a guitar there's these guys walking around and it's basically setting up what i wish more cult horror films would do because mm -hmm. you know when you watch it the only other cult horror film i saw was obviously kill list did you ever watch that thea yes i love that movie yeah, and yeah, i love awesome. how i like when cult films go bonkers you know where there's like oh shit we gotta get out of here that kind of yeah. aspect yeah. of it that's kind of how I wish... What was the other fucking cult movie that I wish had happened? Who cares? But anyway, this movie kind of sets it up where, like, you, you already know on the on the set that it's like... Mm. What, do you, what did you think about Thea? This movie? This part of it? Yeah, just, like, what, what, what kind of grabbed you from the story? Well, I think they did it... They set it up very quickly, and they got mm -hmm. right into the compound, and they showed you how fucked up it is. And I loved the interview style. Mm-hmm. Because as much as I like the actual, like, the POV of the first two segments is fun, but it gets kind of annoying after a while. Like, I would like, I like to see it switched up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I liked that they used the, the different, the difference of, like, actual interview style and investigation style instead of just, oh, there's instead a camera like, in my button. getting car sick. 
Yeah, the yeah. Ex- yeah, I mean, it, people get seriously limited by the POV kind of shot, so they did it yeah. really well with this. It didn't to really me, f- that actor, that cult it, leader guy. He, he is, was amazing. He was he awesome. Was amazing. It didn't naturally creepy. What they did with this, with the POV part, is that it didn't feel like a POV film because there was something going on in every shot, except for the ending <laughs> when the guy's running away. But there's yeah. this whole little subplot, and they did it really well when they run out of batteries. And the guy's fiance gets sick, so she runs off, and I was like, "Oh, she's pregnant." Yeah. But then, but when this you... plot, there's motivation all the way right. through for every shot. So then, when you find out that she's pregnant by his fucking best friend, you're like, "Oh, this hoe is dirty!" <laughs> and you're like, "Where's Jeremy Kyle snapping my fingers?" Where is Maury up in this shit? She was Come hot, on, yo. Maury. That... <laughs> I was on the I was on the Maury show a couple of episodes. That shit was fucking awesome. There's a there's a screen cap of me. <laughs> I'm clapping sure. at the, and the bottom right the name. Yeah, yeah. If you, Why don't you, have it? This? you and I are friends. Sleep. No, no, you and I are friends on you Facebook, so you can probably see sister? it. <laughs> if you look through my Facebook, you'll see there's a photo of me clapping and, and I'm oh smiling and I'm all happy. And the bottom right, the caption is "World World's Worst Natural Disasters" or something caught on tape. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like <laughs> I look like a inhuman scumbag, which is true. So anyway, the the girl, the fiance is fucking hot. You know, she reminds me of the girl from uh, the Golden Child, Eddie Murphy movie. Mm-hmm. Thea, you would love I that don't movie. I know what that is. That's Thea, a it's weird, an Eddie, fun movie. It's a fucking. Really it's, it's an Eddie Murphy movie, so I haven't seen it. Oh, no, I'm telling you, it's not a comedy. Well, listen, really. get over your racism, Thea. <laughs> and there are some black people in Canada. I mean, come on. So anyway, uh, not <laughs> many. Not very many. So um. Yeah. No, but seriously, watch. Do you watch Game of Thrones, Thea? I will not believe it. (laughs) Thea, do you watch Game of Thrones? Yes. It has a very young. um, Oh God, who's the the head of the of Tywin Lannister? Is the bad guy in the movie? Give nothing away about. I'm not saying nothing. I'm saying Tywin (laughs) Lannister's in the movie. You cocksucker. And he's fucking (laughs) awesome, and Eddie Murphy's awesome, and his girlfriend is hot in the movie. Anyway, the girlfriend in this movie looks. She looks like a. Like a prime version of uh, who's the girl from Wayne's World? The Asian girlfriend, Tia oh, oh, Carrera. Right. That's Selma Hayek. Tia Carrera. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Who the fuck picked like a Mexican actress <laughs> over some Asian chick? Anyway, so I guess you don't see in college, Danny. Anyway, so this hot ass fiance was yeah. banging his best friend, and she got pregnant, and she's like, "I think I owe it to him." And the guy's like, "Oh," and I'm like, "Oh, this fucking bastards, all of them." And the director's this guy who couldn't get it up for his girlfriend. Oh. Uh, it leads you to that, oh my god, that Spanish melodrama. They're all humans. Everyone has their issues. Everyone <laughs> everyone has urges that they cannot control. So, we're led to the second, the, the, while the director walks away, the sound guy is sitting there with crazy uh, religious leader, and the religious leader decides to... Pull out a fucking knife. <laughs> box cutter. Box cutter? Yep, he just has it stashed. If he was on an airplane, he would get in serious <laughs> trouble for that. <laughs> that reminds that me. That would be so secluded because he wants his box cutter with him at all times. That mm-hmm. reminds me, that reminds me of the episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Nah, I can't even make the joke. But anyway, <laughs> so the 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 leader says basically drink. He's basically doing the Jonestown massacre. He's He's telling these ki- everybody in the house to uh, drink this Kool Aid, I guess, which is laced with. I forget what they died in Joe's town of. They, they put drink something those in the drinks. Bullets, uh, I don't know. I don't know what they put in the drinks. So Joe's maybe it, I think it was cyanide poison. that they put in the drinks. But yeah. um, so yeah, everybody starts killing themselves and shit starts going bonkers, and these women start kidnapping the pregnant girl after the the guy the guy the best friend who had slept with the wife got pregnant. Oh, the fiance got pregnant. He walked off because he was pissed off about it. He finds some woman who's split in half because I guess they were trying to deliver some baby from her and it went wrong. And he did, but that part was like really melodramatic because he had the both hands twitching trying to take the rag off. I'm like, just fucking throw the thing off her face and run out of there. He had to <laughs> like really drag it out, I guess, because it's a horror film. It's like, the, it's like these characters are aware they're in a horror film. And uh, what, what happens Aren't from... they always? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> What's the berserk thing that happens after the, he finds a split in half lady? Oh, this is my favorite part. This giant fucking, like, monster. No, 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 that, was, that happened before that. That happens way after that. Oh, well, that's the part that I Well, really that's your favorite. Yeah, I believe, I, I understand. But Thea, what happens after, you know, when shit starts hitting the fan? You mean when Buddy finds when they put the baby? When they put the rifle up to the director's head, which was very upsetting to me, because I wish the director had actually had lived up to the end. But go ahead. Uh, yeah, I kind of I kind of was upset. I was like, he's got to make it out of you this. You know what it is? Because you're like, he's the one that got wronged morally in the film. 
Mm. Yeah. But then you're like, oh, well, good I guess guys not. Always finish and he got no redemption for it. No, not at all. And he was even trying to tell his friend to get out of there, even though his friend had fucked his girlfriend. He's like, save yourself, it's fine. And that was pretty cool too, the way they did it too, because like he he it was getting a battery. You that number one. This Your girlfriends will cheat on you. Number two, don't try to be a good person because you'll never ever get anything. <laughs> and he for just it. your girlfriends will still treat cheat on you. And he just took mm-hmm. the shotgun I'm blast to the head. My kids these lessons. <laughs> he just took the shotgun blast to his head. You know what I mean? Maybe he was really? resigned. <laughs> Maybe he was resigned to the fact that his the part fiance where the didn't guy love him. Is telling him to be patient to get shot. <laughs> yeah, like, right. My God, it's so amazing. And I don't know what it was. Maybe they knew that the guy, the the the, the best friend was the father, so they didn't kill him on purpose. Mm-hmm. And so they knew the girl was pregnant. I don't know how. And then you know they kind of just left him alone. Although he was getting chased, they kind of left him alone because I guess he was the father of this baby. And the the they take the the fiance and the the cult leader like bursts into guts and shit. I mean it's fucking insane. It, it really is what you want to see in a doomsday. You know I forgot it's we have pretty haven't, great. What what we haven't seen is Lords of Salem, which is we should do. I that. still haven't seen that either. Yeah, we should. No. All, all three of us Rob's should do that because. Zombie. Because that is like a cult. I assume that's a cult film, too, with witches. So I want to yeah. see bonkers shit in there, too. I love when cults go nuts in movies. So, yeah. um, anyway, it leads to this chase with, with this asshole best friend running around. And you're like, why didn't they just kill this guy first? I, I think the sound guy died a little bit too easy, but whatever. Uh, yeah, and the sound you think, guy always gets shit on. on what do you think? Of, that's true. <laughs> what do you think about the beast, Danny? You loved it, Oh, right? God. Oh, God. I just love it. I just want to hug it. You know what? I, I, the whole time I'm thinking as I'm watching this, like, somebody needs to give this director, or I guess the team, like, fucking $10 million and a real feature film contract. And just well, watch The Raid. Fucking... He's making The Raid Part 2 right now, so I'm, I'm happy with that. He's very okay, good. I will watch it if it's anything yeah, it's a good. It's a, this. No, well, it's not horror-wise, but it's fucking awesome. But anyway, yeah, You know what? Ahead. Is it about roaches? Raid? <laughs> they go, Raid! And they explode. Jesus. <laughs> but um, you like my joke, Thea? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the creature has a chase scene with him, and then we realize the creature. The whole punchline is the creature goes papa, and it's his daddy. I don't know whether he kills yes. him, and he does the mucus from the oh, nose yeah. thing, which rivals uh, Blair was, Witch Project. Yeah, it really does, doesn't that it? That was a booger. It, it rivals Blair Witch. It rivals Blair Witch for that not that booger scene in in uh, Scary Movie One with the booger scene. But uh, what'd you guys think of this one? Boogerific. I'm gonna give it ten out of ten. Me too. I think it, I yep. think it's good. It was solid. It was just it was the best piece of the whole thing, and it was well done in a short amount of time. And great. Ten, ten out of ten. It it had a motive. It had a plot. It had a subplot in it. it gets a little chaotic at points, but it's yes. good in the best ways. It yeah. it severs itself from being POV completely because there's so much shit going on the screen. At the end, it's more POV, but. It, it sets they do it up. split it up. They do split it up and sl- split it up enough that they have the see the the closed circuit television uh, cameras up there. It gets a little house of horror feeling at one point, you know, as in like you're running through a haunted house and things are popping out at you, but it's just like funny and fun. It's so it's it a, it's works. a it's a big step up and it's it's probably it's better, but comparatively to me, it's the haunted house version of the first one. Do you know what I mean? Where it's like yeah. fun. Uh, so that, that's good to me. Ten, I guess three of us say it's ten out of ten. It's a solid one. It's the one that you're like, whoa, and it's the longest one too, which leads us to the final film, which is directed by Jason Eisner, who did Bobo, Bobo with a shotgun, shotgun, and he and also young did Turk. and Young Wise for Young Buck and uh, young, oh Young Buck is it Young, young, young Turk? Turks? You watch that <laughs> YouTube channel? That Isn't that no? That's like that's a, a YouTube that's like channel. A song. Oh, really? Is it? I think it is. So let's oh, let's get know. into this one. What what, what did you guys? Uh, somebody set it up because I wasn't really like that crazy about this one. Go ahead. Well, the yeah, title right. the title is literally like a synopsis. It's it's just <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's two slumber parties really that are going on at once. A bunch of teens and a bunch of like preteens and less than teens that are sleeping all in one house and are targeted by an alien abduction, basically. Yeah, and what's funny is I liked the first three minutes of this, and then I was kind of out. I tapped out a little bit. I was like, eh. Yeah, it was fun. It was kids, like, playing pranks on their siblings. It had the shit. feeling of an 80s kind of Goonies, the first three minutes, where the kids were fucking around. I thought it was the game, actually. Yeah, that got kind of... A little bit, yeah. So it was more about kids having fun and being dicks to each other. That was from the asshole boyfriends, like, from the gate kind of thing, with the girl, with the sister. But then once the aliens showed up, I, I wasn't into it. 
I you know, know what? Yeah. What captivated me all the way through was the, the dog tank game? dog cam. Yeah, was, right. Yeah. Tank, tank. I was. I was. As soon as they did that, I was like, I'm all right with the rest of this. this what fine. kind of dog was he? Was he? A, was he a, <laughs> I don't know. Not I don't a child, look at him, right? but a it terrier. was adorable. It's a cute little doggy, and he looked and... like an old terrier thing. I felt so bad. <laughs> oh, at the end. me too. I was like, what the fuck, man? You didn't care about anybody else. No. You were like, oh my god, the dog. Like, you know, I, want, I all wanted those the people could have been skinned alive for all. I know. I, I mean, I wanted. But I was the... like, please save it. I wanted the kids to get away from it, but uh, the doggy. Come on, leave the doggy alone. He's he's a dog. <laughs> but for me, I wasn't. I just didn't feel it as much. Like I was like, all right. It wasn't I like the noise that it made when. Yeah, but I think. It, yeah, it was. It was like heavily relying on that to be the scary sound. Like once you hear, it, you're like, oh shit! But it, for me, I was like, mm. I'm not into that type of alien. They're taking like the, the sound kind of version thing? and stuff like that. You know. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. Typical, the gray typical. I, I, uh, I still enjoyed it, and honestly, I did not. And maybe it was because I didn't expect to enjoy it because I don't like any of Jason Eisner's other things. You don't like yeah, Bobo? Right. No. Did yeah. you watch it, Danny? Yeah, I've seen it like two okay, times. Okay, I liked it. it was so I fun. just I don't know what it was. I just wasn't a big fan. Yeah, he has this very like eighty slant, but for this one, it just didn't. It kind of felt like they were just fucking around. You know what I mean? I, I didn't. Know, I didn't mind like. this as much as other things. Right. <laughs> so, so what do you? So what would you what uh, give? It? I'd say what it's would, the second weakest. A uh, third weakest. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I think you know, obviously this one and I think the zombie one is the second best of the to the thing. But maybe it's yeah, the, like better maybe it's better the, than clinical trials. But would you think it's better than tape forty nine? Safe haven. Um, I don't know. I I like tape forty nine more than this. Actually, tape forty nine is very subtle and sort right. of in the background as it's supposed to be. Yeah, I like tape forty nine more than this one. So I would say yeah, it's I would second, say so. second to That's last. That's the wraparound. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I myself I would probably give this a five out of ten. Okay. Five and a half. Mm-hmm. Uh, five and a half out of ten. Danny. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna I do say not like, like a, that last I'm shot. I would say that, maybe like a four or even. <laughs> Maybe you're right. I, I, mean, I do like that shot of the kid getting sucked up into the whatever that is, the beam at the end. But I didn't like the dog. Yeah, beam. like I feel like I feel like technically it was better than Phase One or Tape Forty Nine. Okay. Phase uh, One. I felt so bad for yeah, the doggy. So. The doggy was sad when he died. Mm. <laughs> I'm not, and I'm not like some. Aren't we all sad dogs? Dogs? I'm not such a. I'm not like an animal weirdo, but you're like, oh. You know what I mean? But anyway, so yeah, I, I give it a five, and uh, Thea gives it a five and a half, and Danny. I give. I think I give it a four. Mm-hmm. I feel bad. So I which, don't like it. Which even... leads us to the finale. <laughs> leads us to the finale of uh, Tape Forty Nine, which was so funny. It spoiled. Uh, I got it spoiled on of Demonic Origins Tumblr. So I was like, wait, this guy blows his face off, and I I didn't even quite understand the girl got a the girl got a nosebleed and then she saw a Migraine. videotape of the dead, the guy sees a videotape of the main she kid dead. she shot herself in the head yeah i don't know and i thought it was pretty cool the effect of him blowing his jaw off. that was pretty neat although i didn't think that kind of gun fucking blows your jaw off. i think it would be a shotgun you know i what think I mean? any fucking gun that close would no i don't think so i mean at the right angle but like i don't know <laughs> It was weird. So yeah, and everybody dies at the end of that. He does a stupid shit. Number chewing. eight does a right through her cheek. I like the sound of... Huh? Nothing. <laughs> I like the sound effect of her doing the, the spider walk upside down. Yeah, uh, yeah. It reminded me of this shitty movie that I saw called the Poughkeepsie Tapes. Where this guy... It was the I war. still haven't watched those and don't I don't bother. want to. Yeah, it's so... They try to be scary and it's like the ultimate hipster guy trying to be scary. It's a guy with this big full beard and hair and plaid yeah. shirt. And then he does a scene where he's walking yeah, upside. He's doing the spider walk with a mask upside down. It's a fucking stupid move. As soon as people have too much facial hair, I just get them all confused. <laughs> then you're like waiting to hear him say like. I'm like they're all the same. Willy, Willy Willies. Start like quoting fucking Mr. Show. I started so, watching Mad Men this season, and all of them had facial hair, and I was completely lost. Yeah, I, I, don't know one, who. I only seen one guy with facial. I don't watch the show, but I. What should, do you think of that I, redhead girl in that show? I've never seen the show, but that I know redhead girl. Like, yeah. You mean the foxiest lady ever? Oh, uh, yes. Christina Hendricks. Thank you. Christina Thank Hendricks. You. Oh my God! It. There's a there's a clip on YouTube. It was the first thing on YouTube where I was like, "Holy oh, fuck!" Boobs. She plays like this. Um, not even in the boobs. She's in the. They have a clip on YouTube where she's <laughs> I'm like not this. Even in the boobs. She's playing this bride, and then she bones the limo driver, and I had the uh, 
boners coming she, out of my she ears. She was on. I don't, I don't know if you ever seen Firefly, but she was on Firefly. Yeah, she was like they called her Titties McGee in that one. Oh yeah, my god. She oh, anyway, yeah. She she's so so fucking hot, man. Oh my god. You know who she's married to, right? You ever seen the care. Super? I don't want to know if she's married. You know Super Troopers, Danny? Uh, who? You guys ever seen Super Troopers? Yes. Uh, a long time. You know the guy who's the really goofy, weird-looking guy who does the drugs with the big eyes. He kind of looks like a. The weirdest looking guy in Super Troopers at the beginning. You know the three teenage kids that they. Yeah. That guy. Yeah. She's married to that guy with the greasy hair. Mm-hmm. He's when they eat all the. He's probably or... got a big Ethiopian schlong. That's probably why she's boning. But anyway. Oh, I hope so. To to Christina Hendricks. Oh, oh he totally so is. Oh, that. that's weird. Yeah, he's uh-huh. sick. Oh, that rem- I, I was supposed to bring up a joke about Michael uh, Douglas and eating vagina, but I forgot it in our last episode. Anyway, so. <laughs> The face. <laughs> I'm good. Thanks. Uh, no, I'm fine. I love doing it too. But you know, Michael Douglas paid the game. I think it's game. a great thing. I can't believe too. she's married to him. Who? Oh yeah, right. It's actually oh, my yeah. favorite. Thing. I'm telling you, I think that guy has a huge donger or something. She has. She's like all around John Ham and all that shit. I'd be like, bitch, you better sit on this. Why do they call it Ham? Because he's got a big ham cock in his pants. Because his name is John Ham. Yeah, but do you want to think of Ham as a penis? <laughs> so anyway. Uh, so, what, what did you guys think of Tape 49 as a whole? I'd give it a 6 out tape of 10. Tape 49 or VHS? No, Tape, tape 49. 49. We didn't rate Tape 49 yet. So, I'll give it a 6 out of 10. I'm going to give it a, a 5 out of 10. See ya. It was kind of stupid. I'm going to give it a 7, because it was a lot more successful than the yes, first time. very much so. And it, it does what it's true. supposed to do. Which it's is a neater wraparound, but then right. in, the, in the long run, you realize it doesn't need it, because you're watch, when you think of ABCs of Death and how they didn't need any of that bullshit, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, it, it, it's it's very subtle, and it's in the background. That's what it's supposed to be. It's a, it's a very Penn and Teller. There's a movie <laughs> called Penn and Teller Get Killed, where yeah. these guys... They shoot themselves, and then everybody who walks into the room kills themselves. So I guess it's kind of like a chain link, like the ring. People watch and no tapes douche and bros. Get... Douche bros. The yeah. Lack... yeah. The lack oh, of yeah. douche in bros. Yeah. In the other movie, this story is the way lack better. of <laughs> the lack of douche bros helps. So what would you guys give the whole the film as a whole? As uh, VHS two. Who first? Go ahead. Thea. Uh, I'll give him an eight. Eight out of ten. Mm-hmm. Out of ten. Okay. I'm gonna give it a uh, as a whole. The only saving me? grace is really that safe haven. I'm yeah. gonna give it like a seven, and then plus a point two because of that cool end credit What's song. Seven point two out of ten. Uh, giant booger string hanging out of your nose as a giant goat demon is right above your head. That is your son. I agree. I give it. What? I also give it a seven and a half out of ten because uh, for safe haven is amazing. I'll give it a seven out of ten. Super indie titties. <laughs> so, wait, Thea, did you Super did you give did you give it a stupid uh, thing after the ten out of out of uh, seven uh, six out of ten? What? Are you calling our craft stupid? <laughs> I'm sure everybody else does. What what, what would you give it? A, you, you were saying what it was a five or a six out of ten or seven out of ten? Seven. I said it was an eight. Oh, eight uh, out of ten. What? Eight out of ten. Um. You can say Christina Hendricks if you want. Oh, Christina Hendricks. Oh, no, man. that's not. That's too easy. She probably tastes uh, eight like... 8 out of 10. Velvet cake. Strawberry velvet. Mm. Uh, goat head demons coming out of a fucking stomach. Aha, uh-huh, Danny. Anyway. Hey, uh, I so already got compare, compare to the first one, what do you think... Which which one do you think is a uh, stronger film? I oh, think the first one was actually stronger, but... Really? Sa- no, no. I mean, stories. There were some good stories. ones in the first one. They had the haunted house. They had the evil sucky by girl on the haunt. And what was the other? I'll say the haunted house again. Remember the other two stories are stupid. Well, there was but, uh, the ending one was kind of cool. The haunted house, the, right? Yeah. I'm trying to think what else there was. I can't remember. But the cult one is the tightest one out of all of them. So that's what gives this the edge over the first one. But the first one, I think, comparatively, I still had some think good the second movies. one was stronger as a whole. I think it's because of the safe heaven, though. But I do okay, like. Okay, you know what? Actually, the first one, the stories were cooler for mm-hmm. the most part. That fucking the couple with the lesbian was a little yeah. creepy. The it's okay. uh, that that fucking first one was awesome with the demon vampire girl and. No, we won't think about the predator one. Do you remember the Tuesday the Seventeenth? That because was the that worst. Thing was awful. That's what what brings the the which one was that? the rating down. The, don't think, don't even think <laughs> about it. It's so bad. The invisible people one? Yeah. No. You're gonna die tonight. Well, oh, yeah, okay. I guess it kind of was. Yeah, it was like... 
the friends that were out in the woods and yeah yeah they're like predator yeah, but sa know. safe haven in this one is probably the strong it's so strong that you're like okay this is what it and i like the skype one a little but i liked yeah. i liked a ride in the park and i liked alien abduction slumber party too like i liked the other things were there more stories in the first surprise. one compared to this one I liked think. everything better than the first one. Okay, fair enough. So, uh, what would you guys give the whole film? We did. Did we do it? Oh, God, I'm did drunk. <laughs> so, with that, uh, Danny, what's the final word? Schizophrenic disorder. Lovely.